All right, guys, welcome. So it appears that Star Wars Outlaws, the official story trailer, has now released. And of course, I've been kind of looking at this. This is a freaking ridiculous game that no one's interested in. Here, I wonder if we can. Whatever. Does not matter. Do I have subtitles on? I have captions on? Yeah, I'll keep it. Anyway, I'm not interested in this game. Star Wars is a trash IP. Now, of course, you have the uh, dog crap horse water licking audiences who still act like they love anything Star Wars, right? Star Wars is absolutely woke, and no one's interested in the wokeness of Star Wars and what it's become nowadays. We look at Battlefront 2, and we look at the BS that Battlefront 2 did with the female character, uh, they had the maker black. What, she was like half black or whatever? No one cares. No one likes you. Um, and then they had to... It was a pseudo bad guy story where, of course, the bad guy turns into a good guy. We can never get a true Empire storyline. And by the way, out of Disney Star Wars, you're never getting an Empire storyline. I don't really know about the EU. Um, I have no clue what to purchase within the EU to get a good story that is Sith related. I, and you know, the, bro, I bought freaking Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, that freaking stupid book. Holy crap, I feel freaking scammed. The story sucks. It's freaking woke. Freaking chick named Hunters, a freaking girl boss that no one can beat this chick. Freaking hate it. So, I don't want to stumble into that BS again. Picking up a book and it just has a trashy story. It's just egalitarian freaking propaganda. So anyways, we're here. We're going to look at Star Wars Outlaws. We're going to see if the trailer's any good for the story. Alright, let's go. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Okay, so by the way, right here, uh, not too bad that we, just first and foremost, with the verbal delivery of this guy here, the, I don't know, bad guy dude? I guess he's bad guy dude. All right, bad guy dude. Yeah, he looks all right. You know, I don't really know what faction he's a part of. Do I care? Not at all. But he looks all right. He looks like a bad guy. I guess he's supposed to be criminal syndicate something in Star Wars universe. He looks like a kind of criminal, somewhat highbrow criminal kind of guy. So the casting works on this dude. I like the overall kind of dress up that he has. It kind of looks Star Wars, kind of looks like he has some kind of status in the world of Star Wars. And also, I would have to say that his delivery is pretty good here so far. Because I, I listened to a little bit further past this first line here. I didn't, I, I haven't watched the full thing, but his delivery is pretty good. He sets up the tone of the seriousness of the game's world pretty well. So whoever this guy is, I would just say he's doing a good job. Pikes. Of course, right here, we have to have a girl boss. Oh, wow, bro, whoa. I bet she's super strong. Look, she's taking herself so serious. Wow, I don't want to get in a freaking argument with her. She'll just wreck me with her logic and her reasoning. Oh, no, I'm sorry. She'll go find guys with guns, and they'll win the argument for her. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. This chick's an assassin, isn't she? Super strong. This is such a beautiful and brave woman right here in no way could she ever be bested by a man honestly i can't believe we ever put men into the positions that this biatch right here is in so anyways yeah i don't know pikes crimson dawn i'm not really interested in whoever the frick these people are Huts. by the way the graphical fidelity here is actually pretty good i do like the quality in the cutscene. All right, we're back. Uh, that was a bit of a whoopsies. I don't think I was capturing the cursor. So anyways, when we were back here, I was just saying that dude's face is, uh, it, it just looks like a good casting for his role. And then of course, what he's wearing. And you come over here, and of course we have, where's girl? Girl boss over there. Freaking biatch. I think it's capturing the cursor. If it's not, doesn't matter. Hot. It's a golden age for the underworld. Okay, yeah, so criminal, syndicate, that works. Uh, this guy's his casting and who he is and the way that he delivers his role. It's pretty good. So I don't have any complaints about the guy who's probably supposed to be big bad guy. The other characters, though. Wait, what? Oh, hold on a minute. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. 
<laughs> Hold the hype, bro. Hold. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. What the? I I totally Where's thought past this. Hot. Okay, bro, why is that such a big deal? That's climatic or something? Like, the, the freaking, what is that? Is that, I, I guess, drum beat right there? Oh, this guy spits on the table. Okay, what? Does he disagree with the dude? Dude, we know, okay, this is the thing I cannot stand with modern freaking Star Wars. It's not Star Wars, it's gay wars, all right? I hate modern Star Wars because, for one, it's not willing to go edgy. It can't go edgy anymore because it has to be egalitarian, we're super accepting, we're all people and all stripes. I freaking hate this freaking bullcrap. I hate egalitarian stories. And Star Wars is so lame now because it's not willing to get raw, it's not willing to get dark. And you have plenty of stories outside of Lucas and what he was doing that were plenty dark and edgy. I miss edgy and dark stories, okay? So here we are. This we're, we're acting like this freaking guy here. We're acting like that this dude is what? He's gonna beat someone up or what? That he's gonna have a spitting match, you know, arguing it out with this freaking guy. Or he's like, no, nah, bro, I'm going. I'm doing it on my own. Screw you. We there's nothing. There's not going to be an interesting story here. We already know how Disney Star Wars is making their stories. It's all dog water horse crap. It's all gay. It's all lame. And also, by the way, all all of it's identical identity politics you know we had we had the girl boss on the other side of the screen here who's sitting there being like oh i'm basically a man in a, in a man's world even though i'm a woman i'm sick and tired by the way of these freaking feminist characters they were never cool they were never fun nobody ever liked them mara jade sucks okay freaking i don't know go down the list of all these random female characters that we keep on making they all suck narel from freaking diablo 4 sucks Lilith, though, by the way, she was, okay, she was a decent character with her delivery and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's not like I'm not crazy about her. She's still a feminist girl boss, still annoying, but I would say that the execution on her character was, lar it was largely okay, but the issue is, is that there's nothing about lust around Lilith's character in Diablo. What the frick are you doing? Oh my gosh, Blizzard, you suck. Anyways, so back to this game. Um, hot, right here. Big deal, bro. You spit. Oh my gosh. What are we gonna do? Again, again, the melodrama there. That's Disney Star Wars for you. That's what's edgy to them. A guy spitting down on a table. Frick. This is boring. Anyways, it's a golden age for the underworld. Golden age for the underworld. Good performance, by the, the way. Again. Controls every corner of the galaxy. Again, bro. They're just, they're, they keep leaning into the symbolism. Right? All the themes that we know and that we love that was ever the precedence of Star Wars that we ever loved. That's everything that they're using here to convince you to further love Star Wars. They just keep on referencing back to past relevance before Disney freaking bought out Star Wars. Okay, now it's dog water horse crap. Let's keep going. But Stormtroopers, of course. Rebe All right, love of God. Look at this. I remember seeing this uh, this line. It, it freaking stu Listen, this guy's doing a really great job with his delivery and his performance, and I think the casting's actually pretty good. I don't know if they have a good story surrounding this dude. I'm just saying, if you have competent storytellers, this is a good casting. Um, also, I think you can... It looks like the Imperial officer is a white guy, which he's supposed to be, and... That's right. That's right, you freaking. I, I hope it's capturing the cursor. If it's not, anyways, right next to the freaking Imperial officer, dude. Yeah, yeah, you go. You go, freaking stormtrooper. You freaking. You manhandle that freaking civilian. You show them who's boss. And this guy, he's about. He's about to show this freaking Greedo freaking dude who's boss. Anyways, but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. You understand that um, if you knock down the rebellion, technically, you guys, as the Empire, you won't quit. For one, um, you guys are actually really menacing. Uh, you should be. Uh, you have a bunch of resources. You span across the entire galaxy. You can conscript anybody to fight for you. And the rebellion, let's just face it, bro. The rebellion is full of a bunch of freaking washed up losers. They just get lucky and win. All right. George Lucas's Star Wars is fine. Blah, blah, blah. The whole thing. But Disney Star Wars, it's a bunch of freaking losers who get lucky and win. Okay, and don't even get me started about the Thrawn trilogy. Love of God, those videos from my freaking reviews, they're coming out. But freaking A, 
Is the Thrawn trilogy terrible? So anyways, but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. Uh-huh, uh-huh, neither will you guys. And also, if you knock down the rebellion enough times, they will quit, okay? And yeah, this guy, by the way, he's criminal syndicate dude, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't care, though. The Empire, they have every reason to freaking beat out the rebellion. I just, I don't get this. Distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. I just, see, 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 this is what Disney Star Wars has done with its own IP. Is that you have no reason to take it seriously anymore. It's an absolute living joke. The people who are still fans of this are a living joke. It literally, it's just raging retards and morons. They're the ones, and, and flaming homosexuals, they're the only ones who love Star Wars anymore. Nobody cares about Star Wars. I don't take the Rebellion seriously because they do a terrible job writing for the Rebellion, writing for these characters. It's all just a freaking joke now. Now I hate the Rebellion. I want to see them lose. I am now on the Empire side. I want to see these guys freaking kick freaking mother effing Anus. All right. By a rebellion that won't quit. Yeah, yeah, you show him. You show him, Stormtrooper. Freaking backhand him. Do it. Do it. It's a freaking Greedo guy. Freaking do it. Show your superiority, Stormtrooper. Do it. It's an opportunity to make millions. Opportunity to make millions. I mean, I'm not too much against that. It's, uh, right? That, that kind of being the premise and the position of the criminal syndicate guy. I'm okay with that. I don't know what else his motivations are, but that is typically an interesting character, by the way. Like, right, you don't need anything that crazy. I mean, sometimes it would be nice to have something a little bit more deep than that, but that's his entire impetus for the story. He wants to make money off of the war between the, the rebels and the Empire. Wow, that could be actually really interesting. And maybe there's more behind this character than... Because, right, he's making a negotiation here at the negotiation table. So maybe there's something interesting going on here. We know that Disney Star Wars, though, they're not going to bother with doing anything like that. Kavis. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, frick. Okay, here we go. So here we have it. This freaking biatch. I hate this freaking air quotes on protagonist. Yeah, yeah. Identity politics freaking biatch. No Trinity one gives two flying craps about. Is this a little bit too loud? For me, it's a little bit too loud. We're going to bring it down just a tad bit. We'll see. We'll keep experimenting. Screw this stupid chick, bro. Hate this freaking character. All right. Love of God. My keyboard's fighting me now. Everything's fighting me. Oh, wow, wow, look at that. So let, let's, let's, let's look at the themes that they really want to show you here. So, oh my gosh, we're going five seconds. This is painful make for me. Yeah, 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 millions. Okay, so wow, a boss biot, she's grabbing some kind of gadget. So wow, she's a woman ready for the job. Um, then, oh look, wow, she's holstering her freaking weapon. Oh, wow. By the way, this is something that a man does. The freaking gunslinger archetype is a male archetype. And right now, we're trying to push this idea that a woman is going to be the gunslinger archetype. This is already a joke. That, right? Right? Okay, listen. The ligaments of a woman. She, her freaking wrist is giving out holding this freaking revolver or whatever it's not a revolver but whatever gunslinger weapon in the star wars universe all right it's giving out if this was a man that would be a firm freaking wrist you'll be ready for freaking war but here we have it we have a boss biatch she's ready her limp wrist is going to take over the galaxy let's go okay hey, yeah and look at this terrible freaking haircut and look of course she has to have if anything screams nothing more modernity than this freaking bullcrap right here is the fact that she has to have a freaking tattoo on her freaking, uh, like, it's basically a scamp tramp or whatever the frick you want to call it. Skank tattoo, okay? This freaking scamp freaking mother effing biatch with a freaking man's jaw. Because look at that. She's got the freaking chisel in that freaking jaw right there. This chick is ready to, to, to freaking go spend money at a freaking strip club sooner than it is that she's ever going to be the freaking stripper, all right? This freaking this chick is a freaking dude. Anyways, of course she has to have tattoo on her freaking chat. Well, not uh, her underneath her collarbone. Again, that's just a masculine trait right there. By the way, that is a scamp trait right there. That we already know that this chick is basically a, a space lesbian. We know that this is not effeminate. 
woman here. We know that she is basically uh, the woman that's basically a man on a freaking mission. All right. This is antithetical to a woman, antithetical to femininity. This is not a feminine character. This is a woman in a man's role. Let's just be honest. It's a man in a woman's body. That's what this character is. Look at her freaking mop head, by the way. If you want to look at a head and you're like, um, you know what we put on mops? Yeah, put that on the female care, any character's head. By the way, this is basically a Starfield hairdo right here. Screw that game. Terrible character customizer. But this is basically Starfield in Star Wars now. They looked at the terrible hairstyles in Starfield and they said, okay, let's just give this freaking female a mop head. As if anyone's even interested in a mop hairdo. Okay, as if any dude is attracted to a chick with a mop hair dude. Okay, what, did, what have I said many times? We are making below average people now, the protagonists and the heroes to our stories. The people, the never has beens, are now the will be's, okay? The people that are antithetical to heroism, to the traits that we aspire towards. And by the way, great protagonists and characters resemble ideals. And of course, what do we have here? We have a character here that does not resemble any ideal. This is some freaking skank from a freaking bar. She's off her freaking work shift, okay? She just slammed down a couple of pints and said, Heck yeah, bro. You know what? We can say, uh, I don't know. See, I don't want to curse for the video. So anyways, you can fill it in, right? But she's slamming down a couple of pints. She's like, heck yeah, bro. I'm going to freaking slam that freaking pike and that freaking crimson dude and the whole underworld. I'm going out against it because I'm a woman. What's up, bro? Fist bump, let's go. And then she spits on the floor with the dramatic music playing in the background. Anyway, Kves, all right, we, no one cares about you, Kves. You're going to be a freaking character that everyone's going to forget. Screw you, you freaking feminist. But anyways, Underworld's favorite new scoundrel. Okay, good. So she's a special snowflake of a freaking female character. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, Diversity Higher is now the most favorite and the bestest of the freaking Underworld. And does she look like she's going to freaking beat a man in a freaking firefight or a freaking fist fight? Well... According to Disney Star Wars, men have no relevance anymore. Men are not strong or masculine in any way. So, yes, she's going to win every fight, obviously. Now, of course, in reality, does this chick look like she could win an MMA fight against anyone realistic? No. Does she look like she could beat a man in any ring of endeavor? No. But, of course, we're going to just throw this chick in. And, by the way, um, looks like she's Hispanic. So, of course, that's, again, on the scorecard of wokeness. And, of course, on diversity he also fulfills that so now we get to right all the brave and beautifuls that are investing your country and taking all your opportunities well now we get to represent them it's like look this is what's replacing you don't you love it no i don't yes. the underworld's favorite oh wow look oh oh man that hand that hand, that that freaking limp wrist freaking hand right there she's that is a reaffirming freaking shoulder pat right there she's just like us guys she's just like the men she's gonna get the job done i don't know who this freaking dude is but uh good luck bro she's gonna kick the living daylights out of you you because by the way the next scene new scoundrel yep there you go yep see oh my gosh i can't take this bro oh frick i hate look at look at that face <laughs> come, come on dude come on freaking on Oh yes, she's totally menacing. But of course, by the way, girl boss moment. Of course, freaking man right here. She's just freaking beating the living daylights out of him. She grabs his shoulder and then she just rails him down against the freaking table. Which, by the way, technically isn't she in the position where the leverage is working against her? How is it that she's using the, the limited leverage from her shoulder and the basically the non-existent muscles that she has on her arm? How is she slamming that guy down on the table from that position? Let's do that again. L l look at this. Look at this. K Vest, the freaking boss babe. Come on, bro. Come on. What is this? Come on, bro. Really? Really, dude? Really? Come on. And this guy doesn't fight back. So he lets her scoundrel underworld. This guy is dealing with another supposed scoundrel, I guess. Mop head scoundrel. He doesn't do anything about her putting her hand on his shoulder. And then, and then, 
he just lets her grab him like that? Dude, come on. You know, Han Solo with freaking Greedo, right? It's They're both having their hand on the holster. They're both ready. This guy isn't ready. How is he a scoundrel? How are we supposed... To, okay, where's the immersion? How are we supposed to take this serious when literally you have this other scoundrel? Okay, Vess. And he just let the, a woman news. put her hand on him and then freaking wreck him. Scandal. Oh, yeah, girl boss just immediately wrecking his head into the table. I guess she's a good guy, right, guys, by the way? Or whatever the frick, because Disney, they only make characters that are to be resembling a good guy. So she's just misunderstood, whatever, I don't care. Screw you, Disney. Um, then, with the butt of her freaking weapon here, she's gonna freaking whack him in the head. As if, uh, the guy doesn't even have freaking hands, apparently. Apparently he can't just block it, or he can't swipe at her freaking hand. He doesn't do anything! And then we see, of course, modern haircut, freaking, uh, what? Freaking Swolo Bontifa, whatever. I don't know. Give the guy a freaking random name. Whatever. Freaking Chad of the freaking Star Wars universe. Need it last. What do you want? Yeah, of course, of course. So, by the way, so right, this guy is supposed to have some kind of status. He's like, oh, you know, we meet at last. What's up, girl? Yo, can I slam those DMs on your flat chest? Then she pulls up a freaking weapon on the guy. What do you want, bro? What do you want? I'm about to eat some nails for breakfast, bro. What's up? I'm about to go crank some iron in the gym. What's up, bro? Don't test me, bro. Look at this. I mean, again, the fact that this freaking dude, he doesn't have his hand at the ready, but this freaking biatch, she's gonna pull a freaking weapon on him when it's not even a combative situation. Why is she doing? Look at this. Look at this. Yep, okay, committing battery on a guy, so she's a criminal, by the way. At last. We meet at last, so he, he just doesn't take it serious, but she's just gonna sit there and pull the weapon on him. What do you want? It last. Why is she being what so confrontational? I, I don't take this chick seriously. She's not in the position to sit there, and if this guy is offering her a freaking job, why are you pulling a freaking gun on the guy that's going to give you a job? Not even Han Solo, the actual, basically, the guy that created the scoundrel archetype for our, for, for specifically American culture. And even if you want to go, go back as far as Western movies, you don't have male characters just randomly pulling up on each other like this. Because if you do this to a guy like this who's giving you a job, so he has to have some kind of status, he's some kind of level of businessman, okay? If you pull up a freaking weapon on the freaking guy, you've got 10 more weapons pointed back at you. So this whole scene is already screwed up here. There is no relevance in the world of Star Wars. There is no immersion. There is no seriousness of the world because apparently the guy that, it, that has the funds to give you a freaking job, he's just cool with you pulling a weapon on him and, and threatening his life. Apparently you can't find another bounty hunter more respectable than you. What a freaking joke, man. And then think about a character like Cad Bane. He wouldn't do this freaking crap, right? He'd pull a gun on you if he's doing a job for the other guy, and then, right, maybe next episode, then he's doing a job for you, and then he's pulling the gun on the freaking enemy, but you're pulling a gun on the guy giving you a job. Isn't this, like, 101? You don't do this as a scoundrel? What the frick? Uh, of course, though, a scoundrel wouldn't be a woman, so we're acting like any of this is going to operate within any lens of reality or normality or any sense of the matter. Zarek Besh. Okay, so I guess it's a new group. Rich and lethal. Well, not for a woman, bro. See, she's poor and she's devastating, okay? So she's gonna freaking kick the living daylights. See all these dudes on the freaking crew right here? Freaking toast. Obliterated. See, this chick's got one gun. And she also has a freaking droid later on in this who apparently is wearing a coat like he's a human being. Okay, freaking retardar mode engaged for freaking Star Wars, but yeah, sure, let's just act like we're gonna take this serious. Okay, they're rich and lethal. New. They're new, rich, and lethal. Okay, so what? They have new methods from uh, some other group. They're rich and they're lethal. What does any of this mean, bro? We, we, we already know that she is destined to win. She can pull up a gun on anybody and there's no consequences. I don't care. Rich and lethal. You cross their boss, Slero. Okay, so his name's Slero, which, um, given Disney Star Wars, I hate that freaking name. That, that sounds like a henchman name. I don't, I don't like that name at all. Now he wants you gone. Oh, she crossed his boss. Oh, wow, so she's a big deal, guys. Oh, wow, she's, she's the most wanted gal in the freaking galaxy. Oh, dear God, help us.
freaking woman decided to pick up freaking smuggling work and now we have to fear for our lives oh look at all this architecture yeah well it's all imposing and it seems like it has a lot of security frameworks that you have to bypass but don't worry we've got a female protagonist with a freaking retartar droid because we have to keep on what the frick are we doing with droids at this point in star wars they're a freaking joke and we keep on acting like they're freaking humans by the way what the frick are these helmets these helmets look freaking stupid the outfit of this freaking syndicate group like uh, Zarek Bosch or whatever. By the way, that's an okay name. I mean, it sounds like a freaking dude's name. I feel like this guy's name should be freaking Zarek Bosch, but okay, I guess the organization it is. I mean, why not just name the organization like Sleerans or something? I, I already feel like everything's just twisted from what it really should be. I feel like this is already a parody. Anyways, terrible outfit on the freaking henchman dudes. Stupid crap. I'm not interested. And now he wants you. Oh my gosh. Make it stop, bro. Oh my gosh, dude, listen. The horse, water, dog, crap, believers in Star Wars. Look at this guy. He's taking backseat to this freaking biatch who, who she wears the pants in this relationship. By the way, flat chested. Uh, might as well be a dude. She might be a dude. Who knows? Um, she's pulling out her freaking whip on. And this guy, apparently, he's too freaking. He's got a freaking VJJ down here in his freaking pants. Apparently, he can't pull out his own weapon. And for some reason, you got the guys in the back with the weapons out. And of course, they'll get shot first because, again, black female who is questionably female. Apparently, she's just invulnerable. You can already tell. Bro, a part of feminism, feminism 101, you can't die. Gosh. Look at this. Look at this. Dude, okay, listen. How many times? Again, this is on the diversity scorecard. Oh, look, black female who has the haircut of a freaking man, by the way, who behaves like a man in no way is effeminate. This is basically not a woman. This is a freaking dude who entered a woman's body within the realm of a male's archetype. What a freaking joke. Rob is fortune. Okay, now she's sitting down in a seat. What the frick? And she's now, sitting down in the seat now you so she gone. went from pulling a weapon to now what now she's in the what he she's in the position now to be offered something and why is she sitting down i i just don't understand the entire tone of the scene suddenly she's sitting down like this 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 looks for tartar bro oh that's a commando droid by the way from the Clone Wars. That's okay. So, bro, it's just more and more member berries. It's more and more referencing to the past. Oh, remember commando droids? Freaking A, bro. Star Wars, the only good thing they have is what they bought out. And now they've sold out the freaking franchise to freaking wokeness, ideological bullcrap, the freaking horse water liquors. This is the kind of dog crap that they freaking lap up in their freaking moronic mouths. They'll sit there and be like, this is so good, bro. Oh my gosh, Star Wars is back. I love Star Wars so much. Oh my gosh. Why the heck did these people ever even become the core fan base that apparently Disney Star Wars wants to appeal to? What a freaking joke. All right, anyways, let's keep going through this dog water horse crap. Rob his fortune, buy your freedom. This job, it's a death. No way, dude. No freaking way. You're telling me they're also referencing back to Han Solo? Bro, at some point, you gotta start asking yourself, was everyone in the original trilogy and the prequels, were they just everywhere at all times for all these random characters and people who are absolute nobodies? But because this is crazy. We can never just have a character that is relevant on their own. They always have to have some kind of connection to the past. Oh, this chick actually saw Han Solo in Carbonite. Oh, Cal Kestis. He actually fought Darth Vader. Bro, these characters, it, it, it's a really small galaxy around here, bro. Apparently, all these freaking losers just run into all the OG characters that actually had any level of relevance to begin with. And of course, by the way, she has to have this freaking... The, the bun in the back of her mop head looks so stupid. This job is a death wish. Okay, yeah. This game, this game is a freaking death wish. And uh, it seems like the volumes blast my ears out again. I'm in. I don't take you serious. I don't care.
Oh my gosh, of course it's a woman again. What, a female, another female scoundrel? And of course she has to have a deep, grovelly voice like a freaking dude. That, oh, we gotta take her seriously, guys. She, she chain smokes, guys. She chain smokes. You gotta take her serious now. She's a, just as menacing and imposing like a man. Anyways, so we're gonna have a woman tell us, out here you live and die by your reputation. Yeah, well, it would. I would love it if uh, that would happen to Disney Star Wars. Man. Probably no one cares about this freaking female character. And that's a decent design. I have to say this, by the way, bro. This really does look like Pixar, Disney Studios in the world of Star Wars, right? We're bringing Pixar into the universe of Star Wars. It really feels like that's what we're doing. I feel like we're just absolutely Disneyfying the world of Star Wars now. What a freaking joke. I mean, you look at this freaking thing, though. I think that this is actually a good alien design. It does come across to me as Star Wars. And I'll say this right now. A lot of past ideas for Star Wars and their alien designs underneath Disney Star Wars is absolute dog water horse crap. Disney has no idea how to make alien creatures. They just make abominations. I would say that this is one of their better designs right here, this creature. Uh, I don't give a crap because ultimately George Lucas's Star Wars had the superior insects, animals, creatures of varying kinds. It just did a better. Whoever he was hiring, they did a better job than this freaking bullcrap right here. I couldn't give less than two craps about this. And honestly, I just there, there's no story to the world of Star Wars. So whatever all of this vista scenery that they're trying to show off to us is really it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything to me out here you live and die by your reputation ah oh, that's a woman we know that's a woman if it's not a woman and i'm surprised i don't give a crap we know that's a woman bro and i'm tired of disney star wars designs i mean even these guys look stupid i don't even know what the frick is going on here survive oh my gosh oh my great guys admiral akbar is now a woman i'm so happy no the players golly bro uh, look look in the background freaking women again in men's roles we don't have sexy women anymore look at the freaking face on this freaking biatch listen listen i am so sick and tired of this freaking dog water horse crap this freaking basically this chick's like a lesbian let's just be honest she's not even a college lesbian she's a downright i fix up my bike i eat nails for breakfast freaking lesbian right here okay she's a part of the freaking biker gang and she's pumping iron while she's on roids okay this chick is so freaking ugly no one's interested in her character. Give us a freaking white male lead. I'm freaking tired of this dog water horse crap. I'm new to this world. What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Oh, wow, wow, wow. By not. the way, they tried to set up the precedent. You're new to this world. I'm breaking this down a little bit. Um, they set up the precedent that she's super tough and that she's a BA, right? And that she can kick any man's anus. And then they just kick her out like this. And she's like, oh, what's going on here, guys? Okay, what kind of character do we have here? You guys want her to have this pseudo-strength, pseudo-menace, but then it's so quick and easy to just show that she's a freaking dud in the water, bro. I hate this character. I'm not interested in this character. I don't care about the story. I hate this. Jabba, right? well, here we go, Jabba. Of course, by the way, this is the Pixarfication of Disney Star Wars. Star Wars in general, look at this. This effing thing is absolutely from a Pixar film, and they have to do this, and you're like, oh, it's a cute little thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm so disinterested. She's got a whole crew surrounding, again, just trying to, and of course they have to do this where they try to act, they're even trying to make fun of themselves because within Disney, they can't take anything serious anymore, so everything has to be the butt of a joke, so any serious moment that we see, they have to be like, oh, by the way, joke in the next two seconds. We have to be antithetical nowadays to absolute seriousness and the severity to the world, any creative world that we're seeing now in our modern products. Nothing can be gritty. Nothing can be dark. 
And by the way, where's the sexy Twi'lek chicks, okay? Oh, sorry, that's right, it's racist to have specifically Twi'lek women, or Twi'lek, I don't give a crap, Twi'lek, or Twi'lek, who gives a crap? We don't see any sexy dancers around. Where, where's the chicks with their freaking boobs out? Where are they? Oh, that's right, that's right. This is safe and sanitized Star Wars now. We can't have anything that is in the least bit offensive to the blue-haired land whales. Thank God. Skipping that part. None, none of the women are attractive, none of the women are sexy, none of the women are feminine, um, and none of the women are sexualized. Where's the sex slaves, bro? Where are they? For about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nyx. What? What? You just met this freaking thing. We didn't see him in the freaking... I, I'm just gonna assume because of what you showed me here. So apparently you just met this thing in Jabba's palace, and you're like, the longest time I can remember, we've been going at it, me and this random rodent. Come on, bro. Freaking come on. And of course, by the... Ah, oh, bro, come on. She's on an empire, whatever this is, frigates of some kind, whatever. Some kind of vessel, some kind of space interior of some kind. But we're acting like th there's no security system that's going to alarm to this chick being there. She somehow has not been caught. Okay, bro. And again, she's acting like she's known this freaking rodent. Dude, this chick's freaking crazy. That's why I'm just now realizing this chick is literally insane. She literally thinks that she's known this freaking thing for as long as she can remember. So I guess since childhood, uh, okay, listen, you're an adult now. You just met this thing in Jabba's palace. You're freaking crazy, biatch. Oh, guys, it's so cute. Oh, wow, she kicks the crap out of men again. Good job. One shot at freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from what? What's the story? No one cares. What are you trying to be free from? No one likes you. I want the empire to win. I don't want your freedom. I want you in chains at Jabba's palace. With your mop head. But if we're gonna pull this off, we need the right crew. We need the right crew. Oh, look, look, some, this retartar guy that's basically Rocket Raccoon or whatever frick that guy's name was. Because we have the Guardians of the Galaxy, Fi, everything now, as well. It's like, oh, remember that one film that people really liked a lot of years ago? When we, I mean, it was kind of a gimmick, let's just be honest, but people liked it. I never watched it, I don't give a crap. But we have to constantly leverage into this kind of dynamic. And of course, we're acting like we're gonna give a crap about her crew. What? Look, 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 okay, look. We have this freaking female character that no one cares about. Then... But if we're gonna pull this off, we need... We're acting like we give a crap about this freaking droid. Why do I care about this droid? Why? Why? There's there's a ton of them in the Clone Wars. What's what's the big deal about this guy? I don't know. We need the right crew. And then that that freaking thing that's like basically retartar mode Chewbacca. Okay. Okay, and we have to find a new 3PO. So I guess we have to. Apparently, we have to grab C3PO and make him black. So, great. Now C-3PO, apparently he's going to wield a gun now, and now we race-swapped freaking 3PO. Okay, nice. So C-3PO, by the way, that, that, that freaking Greedo in the back right here, totally a, a chick. I swear to God it's a chick. If it's not a chick, I'm saying it's a chick, because they have no idea what men and women are anymore. So I'm just saying all of it's women now. The right ship. They race-swapped freaking 3PO. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable, bro. Abs oh, and by the way, yeah, you gotta love this. We, we have to make a freaking joke out of everything. Right there. Wow. She's grabbing a ship. Wow. What a great epic moment. And they're aiming their guns at her. They refuse to shoot at her until she's about to blast off. What a freaking... Because we have to make a joke out of everything. Why are they not blasting her right now? Why are they not, like, doing anything with some kind of technology in the hangar bay? Why are they not shutting down the freaking ship? You're telling me, what, what, what kind of security measures do we have in this freaking area? I don't know. But, oh, wow. Yeah, great moment that she takes the ship. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. I can't, I'm spurging out, bro. I'm, I'm freaking shaking. I'm frothing, bro. My gosh, I'm so excited about this story. Wow, what an awesome moment. Reminds me of Star Wars. The best hunters in the outer oh, that's right. This isn't Star Wars anymore. I hire you 
because you are one of the best hunters in the outer rim well because she's a woman right and of course this chick she looks like she's disabled because again we cannot we have to keep on maximizing the, the freaking woke identity politics of the star wars universe hold on let's take a look at this again i hire you because you are one of the best hunters Again, 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 we know that in reality, no man is hiring a woman. Again, the destruction of immersion here, that a man is going to be hiring a freaking woman to be the best of the best in the galaxy at her job. No, if this were actually a logical, relevant story of any kind, we know that he would be hiring a white man for the freaking job. All right, but that doesn't score off on the woke identity politics scorecard. You are one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. She's of course, he refuses to kill her. He should have killed her. Screw that chick. More connected than you let on, Slero. Oh my gosh, bro. It's like, it's, it's not enough that she's freaking black. I think she's supposed to, maybe she's also Islamic or Indian. Like she has a, they have to, man, they're really going at it here. They are trying to, so what, she's, I'm gonna guess, she is disabled. Uh, blackish, Indian. Uh, looks like a dude. Oh my gosh, man. Flat chested. They're really going in on this. I cannot wait for this game to go freaking broke. Rim. And if it doesn't go broke, I will seethe. She's more connected than you let on, Slero. Best is mixed up. Oh, I bet she's super connected. Why? Because she's a woman? It seems like all the women just have it all together. I wonder what the male characters are like in this. Because. As we know with feminist literature, which this is what this is basically, it's feminist fiction, uh, woke fiction, please make it a genre and get it out of our fantasy genres. Anyway, in all the other genres, just make woke fiction its own genre and get out of our properties. Just freaking do it. I'm sick and tired of this bullcrap. She's more connected than but again, what we have to do with male characters now is that we have to make them basically women. We have to make them as useless as a female character. And we have to make the women as useful, filled to the brim with utility as a male character is. We basically gender swap the archetypes of the men and the women. So this guy is probably at some point in the story, he's going to have an emotional fit like a woman would. Because again, and, and, and the women, of course, they're going to be pragmatic, reasonable, blunt, no BS. I'm going to get the job done, bro. I'm going to shoot you and I don't care because I get the job done. But on Slero, best is mixed up in something bigger. Oh, of course. Of course, this story has to be super relevant, too, by the way, because every freaking character now that we make in the Star Wars universe that why the frick we already know what the most impactful stories are. And we have to mix it up within the most impactful story, which is the original and the prequels. Everything that Lucas made is where all the relevance occurred. And now we're acting like these nobody characters were acting like they have any significance. And of course, these nobody characters that are the wrong identity for the role. The Outer Rim is a dangerous place. Everyone is... It's kind of an interesting design. I'm not against that. I mean, it looks a lot like the Clankers from the prequels, just uh, looking more humanoid than before. I'm not entirely against that. And looking at this, that's not a terrible design on a beast. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. My word, they really want this chick to come across like she's a BA, bro. Again, what we did, we took Star Wars, which was made for boys, and now it's being made for lesbian women. Excellent. Fighting for their piece of the galaxy. Oh, the frick. Uh, come on. Man, I'm so sick and tired of egalitarian stories. This, this is dog water horse crap. By the way, that ship. That ship design. Piece of the galaxy. It's not a terrible ship design. I'm actually okay with it slightly. There's something about it, though. Again, it feels like Disney Star Wars. It feels so lazy. I don't necessarily have issues with it. I just know that under Lucas, this would be a very different ship. There would be more flavor to it. It's basically a hunk of metal. Let's just be honest. Man, they lack imagination. They really do. But all I want Let's go back to that line. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. 
And of course, given that you're an egalitarian, you believe in a socialist, of course, and that's what egalitarianism ultimately leans into. But anyways, of course, because you're a socialist egalitarian, you believe that everyone deserves a piece of the galaxy. For their piece of the galaxy. And we're acting like this chick deserves any piece of the galaxy. No, you deserve to be a freaking dancer in Jabba's palace. But all I want is to live free. Again, egalitarian trope. Oh my gosh, my freedom, bro. I'm just fighting for my freedom, guy. Oh my gosh, brother. Give me that freedom. I need some of that freedom, girl. It's to live free. So I'm gonna risk... Gonna risk it all. Well... Yeah, and apparently you live in a world where nobody holds you accountable for pulling up a weapon on your freaking employer. Get off. What the frick? What a joke. Yeah, hold on, random, random animal that I've met, like, what was it, one month ago now, probably, by that point in the story? What the frick are these spiders? Okay. And, there you go, that's the end of it. Star I'll just Wars play Outlaws it out. Yep. Available now. Yeah, see, you can, you can pre-order this dog water piece of trash. Oh, aren't, aren't you excited? You can get three days early access because there's no other reason to buy something, to pre-order anything. Besides now, they have to come up with this silly excuse, which is like, okay, well, since we don't really have a good reason for you to do anything uh, in buying our game early, we're just going to let you play the game early. So actually, this game is releasing on August 27th. But now, because they have to glisten off their freaking money ledgers, we're going to get it three days late. And of course, if you're somebody that happens to be making content around these types of games or these types of products, of course, now they're trying to basically shill out their shills and they're giving you the access early so that you can get out your review or whatever earlier than the other people who refuse to give these crappy companies any more money than what they deserve. And of course, this is coming from Ubisoft, which is a massively woke company who, by the way, they work with ESG, specifically Sweet Baby Inc. But of course, we know that ESG is so much bigger than Sweet Baby Inc. They're so much bigger than themselves. They have multiple branch offices, multiple branch companies. ESG is ubiquitous okay man it is in many industries it is in our products don't forget it's with products like gillette products like i don't know just think of any beer company it's pretty much any of them that they're with obviously it's a bunch of companies and the more prolific that a company is yes absolutely esg is working with them now basically what's happening is that your government money what we call tax dollars yeah uh the money robbed from you for your labor from the government is being funneled into propaganda now for the populace so that you accept not only egalitarianism but multiculturalism so that you accept the demoralizing decaying state of modern civilization oh you have to accept, and it's normal, to allow other people to take your opportunities from other locations outside of your borders. You see, that's really normal, and that's acceptable, and giving away all of your opportunities, and your government taxing the living daylights out of you so that they can give educational grants to these people who will then infiltrate the workforce and then turn it furthermore woke and furthermore ideologically possessed. Don't worry, this is all normal. You have to accept it, and yes, we're going to to continue taxing you and taking away the future that your forefathers fought for yeah well you don't deserve any of that it's everyone outside of your borders they're actually the ones who belong to your birthright so anyways that is the crappy product here of star wars outlaws what else is there something after by the way Okay, so there were, it's also, what, it's Massive, Massive Entertainment, a Ubisoft studio. Well, that's not good news. So they don't have a track record. How do these people keep getting jobs? They don't have a track record. They barely have anything on a resume to show for. And then when they do come out with anything, it's dog water horse crap. So they just basically get shut down immediately. Is this like a weird excuse to create cover fire for Ubisoft so that they don't get shut down so instead they're like oh we made this random studio outside of us the publisher so that we don't get shut down they get shut down when they make their woke dog crap propaganda and of course lucasfilm games because it's not lucas arts anymore for some reason okay um yeah bro 
I'm not looking forward to this. I think the the casting. Oh, look at that! I can pull it up. Oh, that's cute. Anyways, the the casting on the villain guy. I think it's actually not too bad. Obviously, though, he has no relevance here in Disney Star Wars because their stories suck. And you, when you really look at what is this entire storyline about? I mean, what really, really think about it? So, criminal organization. Let's just mute this. I don't give a crap. So we have criminal underworld that I guess is trying to make money off of the war between the rebellion and the empire. So this guy's trying to milk it off. Uh, you got this chick who thinks that she's really important and she's going to just kick the living daylights out of every man that stands in her way. You go, boss, babe. You go, girl. God dang, I'm freaking I'm clutching my pearls because I'm freaking turned on right now. But then you got these dudes who are a terrible outfit, by the way, for the new organization. Of course, we have to have a girl boss antagonist because we have to have a girl boss protagonist and now antagonist now. So basically, the antagonist male in this story, he has to be the guy that's taking the back seat to the, I guess, Indian or maybe black female. And we know that so many of these characters are going to be female, 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 and they're all in men's roles. Freaking hate this dog water horse crap. So what? She's going across the galaxy, I guess, trying to fight the criminal syndicate. He's trying to be a scoundrel. That's, I guess, the woman with a heart of gold or whatever. She's also going against the empire. I don't know. What the frick is this story about? Why do we care? Why do I care about this story? I'm not interested. I hate this character. I don't care about who she is. She's not relevant. She doesn't have any place in the Star Wars universe. And what? She's going to get a crappy crew together. So that's a part of her mission, her journey, is that she's going to get crappy. Of course, we have Blackface 3PO over here as well. She's getting this crappy diversity squad together we even make the droids diverse now as well for some reason i don't know why i guess even the antagonist chick maybe she has a heart of gold and she's gonna join them at, in the end because no woman can actually be evil i mean, honestly look at her freaking dialogue lines Vess is mixed up in something bigger like it's like she's gonna just convert at the end of the story because it's the dude the white male who's the bad guy and it's the women the diverse and brave and beautiful women they, right? They're misunderstood and they're the heroes. And we always do this, by the way, where we specifically, the white men, we're not afraid of making dumb villains. But when it comes down to the women, right? The women always have to be the heroes. Anyways, I hate this dog water horse crap. Those are my thoughts. Screw this game.